And in the eyes of his master, but he was a leper.
a word inspired by the Spirit of God that can never fail. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. A word that is inspired by the Spirit of God that can never fail. Hallelujah. Amen. Divine word will break loose or the enemy from your life. Hallelujah. Amen. Divine word bring deliverance. Divine word parted Red Sea. Divine word will bring you healing. Come on. Divine word will bring you miracles. Amen. Divine word will break the way where it there is no way. Amen. Divine word will be thrown the enemies from your soul. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus said something. He said, Having that the air will pass away, but my word can never pass away. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Two types of words of God. The written word of God and the spoken word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. If this two is in your life, you can never fail. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And let's go to the verse one that we read. Nehemiah was a commander of the army. He was a great man, the Bible says. He was a great man. You see, you see, this is the man. He is a great man. And in the eyes of his master. But he was a leper. This word is a very wicked word. Very wicked man and well. How can a man like this can be le can be leper? How can a man at this stature and this influence in the community and in the country can have that leper? How can a man at that level can have leprosy? Hallelujah. Amen. The devil is a liar. Amen. I said the devil is a liar. Amen. How can a man, such a man, can have a leprosy? A man in this caliber, just thinking about it, the commander of the United Kingdom, let's put it so, the commander of the whole army, the United Kingdom, everybody knows him. And he's a leper, and he comes like that. And imagine he's standing in, in front of his younger or the, the lower ranking officers. The shame that was upon him. But when well, if God is working through you and using you to bless people, people will not recognize your fault, your shortcomings. Hallelujah. Amen. Because they are benefiting from him. Because through him, God did victory in Syria. And they were enjoying the peace. And they were enjoying the tranquility that the, the country can offer. Because of him, they would all enjoy life. So people ignore everything on his leprosy and all that was attached to him. But let's reverse it into an ordinary man. They would have despised him. Hallelujah. Amen. I can imagine the man on the street, everybody celebrated him. You will be a celebrity. Hallelujah. Amen. On the street of the most of the children and the women who were at him because of his stature, because of his influence. And the people, anyone who sees him the first time will be, will be disappointed. We have heard about him. That Nehemiah no is a great man. Nehemiah no is a great man. But the first time you met him, you have a leprosy all over the place. Oh my God, is it how the man is? Hallelujah. Amen. The shame. The shame that will come upon him. Hallelujah. Amen. How? The name and get got this leprosy. How? How? The name and got this leprosy. The disciples approached Jesus and said, Master, was it not good seed we saw? How come they said times on this on the field? Jesus says, one man slept. When men slept, the enemy came. Was it his enemy came to sow the child and went his way? 
Hallelujah. Amen. When men slept, there are two types of sleeping. The physical sleeping that God made for the man. That you sleep your after your hard day of work. You are so tired, you come and sleep. And God made the body to rebuild itself. The body to, to reproach itself. So when you wake up in the morning, you feel so fresh. Hallelujah. Amen. And then the spiritual sleep. Hallelujah. Amen. If you sleep spiritually, the devil comes and steals. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So Jesus says, if the whole world or the household have known the time and the night that the enemy will come, he would have kept watching. He would have kept watching. But when the man slept, the enemy comes and put things in the lives of people. When the man slept, when first began, When the man slept, the enemy came and he read the home. When the enemy slept, so when, when the home owner slept, the enemy came and he read the home mm. and bring alpha in the home and bring divorce in the home and bring division in the home and bring misunderstanding in the home and bring sickness and disease in the home. Why? Because there is a sin in there. Mm. And it happens into the disciples when you act on you read Acts chapter 12, verse 1. We say, Herod harassed from some from the church. The church did nothing. Hallelujah. Yes. And he arrested the church. The church did nothing. Mm. And he executed him. He and with saw the church did nothing. Mm. And he proceeded further to arrest Peter. Mm. Then the church wake up. Say, oh, right. wake up. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. This is how it is. Mm. I would say we are not fighting against the flesh. We are fighting against the principles and powers. Spiritual things we are fighting with. We are facing with. Hallelujah. Amen. I have been attacked many times, spiritually speaking. Hallelujah. Amen. They will attack you. You have to wake up. Mm. Prayer is a part. Mm. Waking up, prayer is a part of Christianity. Amen. You can't just sit down when you are Christian and sit down. The enemy will rob you from your, from, from your happiness. Mm. Will take something that is so special from you. Hallelujah. Amen. Talking about the shed. Hallelujah. Amen. There are three ways for so far as I'm, I'm, I'm concerned, I'm understand. Three ways the enemy can bring shed. Three ways the enemy can bring shed. Or the shed can come upon you. The shed. That the people that are around you can bring it to you. Hallelujah. The shame that people that are around you can bring it to you. So we are going to read Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. We are going to start from verse 10 and then 11 and then 12. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you, if you there, Ephesians chapter 5. Verse 10 and it says, Finding out what is acceptable to the law. Finding out, if you don't find out what is acceptable to the law. And it says, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of the darkness, but rather expose them. Hallelujah. Your husband, you do something that will bring shame. You did not tell him. Your wife, you do something that will bring shame. You did not tell her. When that shame comes, you have your fair share. Hallelujah. Amen. When that blame, when that shame comes, you have your fair share. Hallelujah. Amen. And any. Wise person will always listen to advice. Mm -hmm. 
say, darling, this is not good. This is not right. He said, don't come around. Your friend is bringing you money to hide from the, from the husband. And you just agree with that. Hallelujah. Mm. Whoever covers the thief is also a thief. Hallelujah. Hide for me. And so also tomorrow you can also hide. I hide for you. You scratch my back. And you I scratch my back. Scratch my back. I scratch yours. Hallelujah. When that shame comes, you will have your fair share. And the another shame that the enemy brings, just like the demon's one, is not any man's fault. The enemy came to sow that shame. Hallelujah. Amen. And then there is a shame that it is your own conduct. That is your own hands. You use your own hands to bring that shame upon yourself. You know this is not right, but you still don't want to go ahead anyway. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's continue to read. Let's read verse, verse 12. Is it for it is shameful? Mm. It is shameful even to speak of the things which are be done by them in secret. It's because, because you are not ashamed now, just because it is not a big force. But there is nothing that is going to be hidden forever. Mm. One day, all the work, deeds that we are doing in the secret places, one is exposed. Oh, is it brother, what you can do this, my God? Mm. People will be disappointed and even leave the church. Oh. Even your friends will just say, no, this is too much. Mm -hmm. The thing that you can bring into your own self, mm. the shame that you can bring to your own self, Shame. We have to avoid it at all costs. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There is a shame. Three things that can be shame, or three ways that can be shame. As a child of God, we have to live in a decent life. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, "Let us be yes and no." no. Uh, was it beyond that is of evil? Hallelujah. Somewhere, but I believe that he might have 
seeks medical attention many times or to many places. Just like the woman of the issue of blood. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says he went to Israel. Hallelujah. Amen. What I want to make a point here is this. There's no matter God, you see, God always brings people into your life. Amen. That's no matter how great or small that person is. There is a something in that person. If you just pay attention to that person, that's no matter how small, how great, how rich, how poor he is, there's a something about that person. God deliberately brought that person into your life to change it. Hallelujah. Amen. I see people, the people don't believe me. That six months, see six months, ten days or so, I've been, I've been to this country. I met a man, I never met him away. His father was a Jewish, his mother was English, his, his English man, woman. Her father, his father was a Jewish man. I met a man. And his mother is an English woman. This man, no way, I just go and brought him into my life. Six months, ten days in this country, how incompetent to remain. Amen. Do you understand it? Yes. God, if you see God, if, if you're a child of God, always people will come to you now, either to help them or God will take you from that level to another level just because of that person. Hallelujah. Amen. And now to also watch out that I just as God bring people to your life. Any me also bring people to your life to bring your Christianity down, to diminish your, your faith, to dismantle your faith, to dismantle whatever you have achieved for or for have struggled for. What is the time for you to go and pray? Your friend will just say, Oh, let's go to power, let's go and do this, let's go and do this, and just follow you. Because you have. Let's go and do this. It's dragging you up from the faith slowly, mm. gradually, gently up from the faith. Mm. So you have to watch out. Amen. Amen. And the Bible says that this Naaman went into Israel. And now we know Israel. When you read, I think Leviticus chapter 13, verse 45 and 46, the situation of Israel is different because they treat this leprosy or lepers. Where is the living way in the world? The leper have to wear tatter clothes, dirty clothes. Even if you are rich, you have to change and wear filthy clothes and have to shave the head. Look and read it there. Leviticus 13, verse 45 and 46. And you have to shout, Unclean! 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 You have to shout for the people to pay attention to yourself with this ugly thing. Unclean! 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 What's a shameful thing? What's a shameful thing? And when we read verse 46, they live alone, they are lonely. Hallelujah. Amen. And when you come to the public, you have to shout, Unclean, 
pain, no pain, no pain. The God is about to take the situation around. Right. Hey. Hallelujah. Yeah. That shame, God was about to take the situation around. So when you read the Bible, Jesus something said that. He said in the, during the, the days of Naaman, there was a million leprosy in the land. But only one man, only one man that was healed by Eli, Eli, Elijah. Hallelujah. Amen. My Bible says, then this man went to hit the king and said, This is the permission of hell. There's a man, the land of Israel, according to the maid. She said, The man is able. The man is able to heal from a leprosy. And he went with the letter. The man was a diplomatic man. He can't just go to another person's country without revealing himself who he was. Because he, he went with delegation. Hallelujah. Amen. And my Bible says when you when you keep reading, he went with ten. Silver, 60,000 shekels of gold. Today's market, yesterday I did some research. If it's a today's market, the 60,000 shekels of gold would be 3.6 million pounds. Hallelujah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the 10 talent of uh, the silver, uh, a talent of silver converted is about. Four thousand and about hundred dollars. So in that ten of them, we took about say forty thousand dollars there about. So let's in, in summarizing, let's say all together it's about four million dollars. The man went to Syria. He was a wealthy man. Today's money, if you have four million, at least you are rich. Hallelujah. Amen. He went there. And Elijah, moment he got there. Elijah sent a messenger into him saying, Go and wash. Go to Jordan. Direction. Go to Jordan. That's the direction. Wash seven times. Instructions. Hallelujah. Amen. And my Bible says, We went down into Jordan. And he did himself the first time. Nothing happens. In the second time, nothing happens. In the third time, nothing happened. Why? Because the word of God says seven times. And yeah. the fifth, fourth, and fifth time, see the same. And the sixth time, see the same. And he did in the seventh time. He came out clean. Hallelujah. Amen. It is the word of God. Amen. It can never fail. The word of God is like a sword in the devil's hand that it is accurate. The word of God is really, is like a stone that is the devil's hand. It's precise. The word of God cannot fail. It went straight to the target. Hallelujah. Yeah. And I achieved this purpose. Hallelujah. Yeah. I can imagine the man came out clean. What big to celebration in Damascus? The people that saw this man immediately, the people that saw this man full of leprosy, the man is back. The man is back from Israel and his name. Mm. What would be the tribulation? What, what would the people say about our God? What would people say about the God of Israel? Hallelujah. Amen. This is the God that we say. I always say, we don't serve a dead God. We serve a living God. He is the same yesterday. He is the same today. And he is the same forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We don't serve a dead God. We don't. It does not matter the situation. If you can commit it to the hands of God. If you can take it to the hands of God. If you can give it to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Is our problem bigger than neighbor's one? Hallelujah. The God who can do greater things, he is God also that can do small things. Yes. The Bible says, Call me in the days of trouble, I now answer you. Hallelujah. Amen. Call me in the days of trouble, and I 
don't answer me. Jeremiah said, Oh Lord, you have created the world with an abstract hands. Oh Lord, you have created the world with an abstract hands. Is it anything to add for you? And God also speaking for himself. He said, I am the God of all flesh. Is it anything to have? Nothing. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When the Son of Man is up, I want you to, we're going to pray. Yes. Just for five minutes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Naaman traveled all the way from the land of Israel. And he received his healing. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Going on your life. I don't know you are struggling for something. I don't know who you are under attack. Because we don't know who you are under attack. Spiritually speaking, yes, God is today. The day to day things in dealing with the man, in dealing with the woman, in dealing with the human heart. Hallelujah. Amen. Shout out. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory, hallelujah.